Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. And if you are new here, my name is Hannah. I am a Western practical astrologer. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at aspect patterns and shapes in astrology. What are they and why are they so important? Stay tuned and find out. But before we do dive into today's video, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and click the bell. And if you are interested in booking a reading with me, then you can visit my website, hannaselsewear.com. There you can also find my practical astrology ebooks, guide, merch, cheat sheets, all that good stuff. All the links to these products will be in the description box down below. And if you want a new video early, ad free, plus PDF guides and daily forecasts, head on over to my Patreon. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you so, so much to my patrons for all of your support. As always, I hope you find this video to be helpful. Let's do this. All right, so first things first, make sure that you watch the degrees in astrology video for more information, as well as the aspects in astrology video, because both videos will help you piece together the information presented in this video today. See the links in the description box. All right, so what do I mean by aspect patterns and shapes? If you take a look at your birth chart, you may notice that the planets are set out in a particular way. You might see a few planets in one sign or two signs, or you might see that many of the planets in your chart are just sort of spread out across the chart. This chart, for example, shows most of the planets spread out amongst six houses, or this chart showing most planets in Aquarius and Capricorn. Or how about this one, showing a little bit of everything. This chart shows a shape known as the splash, which we will explore in a little bit. Though, before we do move any further, take a look at your own chart. See what patterns or shapes you can find. Also notice the green, red and blue lines in the center of your chart. These lines show the aspects. They're just focusing on major aspects and the in conjunction for the purpose of this video. The red lines show the oppositions, so oppositions and squares, and then the blue lines show the trines and sextiles, and the dashed green lines show in conjunctions. You can find the aspects beneath the chart using astro.com as well, and this certainly makes things a lot easier, but it's also about making adjustments based on the orbs you use. So basically, these lines in the center of your chart can help you identify the pattern, but why are aspect patterns and shapes so important? Simply put, they help show the bigger picture. In astrology, there are just so many moving pieces, moving parts that, you know, we can, we can separate and discuss individually. For instance, you might talk about the upcoming Mercury retrograde in Aries this April, so April 2024, or you might share your thoughts about how both Venus and Mars are in Aquarius right now. Still, it is the patterns and shapes that help us see all the moving pieces and how they are connected. How they communicate? What messages are they trying to convey as a whole? We can look at the aspect patterns and shapes as an opportunity to really zoom out, to step back and grasp a full picture of a person, of an event, of a situation. And then what we can do is we can zoom in. We can take a closer look at the details. See, sometimes in astrology, we can fail to see the forest for the trees. And a big part of that, I think, is because it can be rather difficult to try and articulate the many moving pieces. And there is only so much time in a reading, a session, a video. Perhaps it would be of a good use in this regard to locate Jupiter in your chart for some insight as to how you see the bigger picture. Are you good at it? 
do you struggle with it? I know for me, uh, Jupiter is in Virgo in my chart. It's also retrograde, uh, conjunct my ascendant in Virgo and Jupiter is in detriment in this sign. Virgo can get caught up in the details and can overcomplicate things, overthink, worry as well. Trying to see the bigger picture can be challenging uh, when we are too close to something small or minor. Though, on the other hand, if you have this placement like myself, you can break down the bigger picture into smaller chunks, into smaller pieces, and you can make the bigger picture digestible. <laughs> Still, in an overall sense, perhaps a challenge when it comes to seeing the bigger picture in astrology is being too close to our own charts, to our own placements, or seeing what we want to see in somebody else's chart instead of viewing things more objectively. <laughs> Essentially, aspect patterns and shapes help us zoom out and see the chart from a bird's eye view. We get to look at this map of the skies, but from above, and then we begin to focus on certain placements and areas. And what happens is we start to pull back the layers. We start to explore the nuances as well. And we realize that the bigger picture is comprised of so much information. Perhaps then in this way, this is where Mercury, your Mercury placement can come in handy, right? We can use Mercury to our benefit as we draw connections and conclusions and we communicate what we see. After all, Mercury is about processing, learning, researching how we arrive to particular conclusions. And we all have different ways of learning and thinking and processing. And we all have different ways of seeing the big bigger picture too, right? Jupiter. Now, whilst Mercury is our logical mind, our lower mind, Jupiter is our abstract mind, our higher mind, and both work together. Now, according to astrologer Carol Taylor, aspect patterns occur when three or more planets are brought together by aspect, forming a recognized aspect pattern. Now, I am definitely paraphrasing here, but Carol Taylor says that aspect patterns are dynamic but there are interesting ways the aspect patterns present themselves with any person's life. And even psychologically speaking, there is a book titled Aspect Pattern Astrology, which says that aspect patterns in the birth chart reveal the structure of an individual's consciousness, the key to understanding their hidden, often unconscious motivations. It provides a valuable tool, both for understanding your own psyche and using astrology to help others. Therefore, if you have an aspect pattern in your chart, there seems to be something deeply psychological about how that aspect pattern plays out for you. This approach is about understanding someone through a much more holistic lens. And this was also developed by, I will insert the names here, <laughs> at uh, the Astrological uh, Psychology Institute. Indeed, aspect patterns look at the complexity of a person. As humans, we are, we are rather complex. Moreover, astrologer Mark Edmund Jones described different types of aspect shapes across signs and houses that may or may not um, involve particular aspects, but create distinctive patterns in the horoscope. Essentially, he come, came up with seven of his own planetary patterns, and these patterns are often named shapes. We will look at three of these shapes. By the way, Mark Edmund Jones lived from 1888 until 1980. I know, he lived a good life, a long life, and he certainly left his mark on astrology. Now, before we do explore a few of his shapes, let's keep it old school. Let's explore a few of the more classical patterns. In this video, we're going to be looking at the T-square, the Grand Cross, and the Grand Trine. And we'll also throw in the stellium, okay? Because I did mention it in the previous video. And there are other patterns like the kite, the cradle, the Star of David, or the Grand Sextile, and the Yod. And my personal favorite, the Mystic Envelope. <laughs> you can look these patterns up. Oh, and a couple of other things here before we break these down. 
Remember how in the aspects video, I said that the aspects point to the type of dance the planets perform together, the beats, the steps, okay? And that the music differs depending on the planets involved. Well, perhaps we can look at aspect patterns as a group dance, as a collective routine. Every planet is doing their part, performing their moves. Imagine a stellium as the dancers in a line or sort of towering up on top of each other. <laughs> or imagine a splash as the dancers dispersed across the dance floor. Oh, and also having decent knowledge about the planets will help you with these descriptions. Plus, it's important to remember modalities and elements. I mean, for example, a fixed T-square is going to manifest differently than a mutable T-square. Or a er grand trine is going to manifest differently to a fire grand trine. First up, the T-square. So the T-square is formed when points in opposition also form a square with another point or points. The points in opposition counteract and resist, but they can also collaborate and create balance. Now at the same time, the points in opposition clash with the squares to other points. T-squares indicate tension and pressure. So these pressure points within the chart. Drives then are also conflicted, but they also point toward motivation, overcoming, problem solving. The point that creates squares to the opposing points is known as a vocal point where conflict between the opposition can be resolved. However, this point can also overcompensate. And then the point opposite the vocal point is said to be sensitive. Now in Huber astrology, this is called an achievement triangle. The energy from the T-square can be dynamic and the friction can create this drive and energy to achieve. We need to talk right now because anytime I try to express myself, I don't feel like I'm being included. Uh, I hear what you're saying, but I'm okay on my own. I'm okay with separating myself from the group. Okay, but can you not understand that this is getting in the way of me feeling good about myself. Sure, but from my view, I want to be an individual. I don't want to follow the crowd. Honestly, I can hear from both views why this is so important, but I'm over here and I'm feeling really angry. I'm, I'm feeling the tension. I, I feel like I'm about to explode if we do not reach a result right now, okay? Something needs to happen. I want to shine. I want to be seen. I, I want to be included. Sure, but what is so wrong with detaching? Why do I have to be seen? Why does it matter so much? Oh, why can't you not just get on the same page if you would just come together and accept that there's a part of you that wants to be involved, there's also a part of you that wants to be an individual, and we'll just call it a day, okay? And then that means I can focus on the things that I actually want to do. <sighs> Why am I getting so emotional about this? I just wish, I just wish they would see. I wish they would acknowledge that I can, I'm here. I can help, okay? I just, I can help with this situation. <laughs> Next up, the Grand Cross. So the Grand Cross is formed when pair oppositions are connected by squares. The pair of oppositions counteract and resist. They can also collaborate, focus, and create balance. Now this can be very determined energy, right? Very determined pattern, a strong aspect pattern, but it can also indicate stagnation and resistance, okay? Resistance to change. The Grand cross points to conflict and frustration but it also it also indicates security and achieving achieving one's goals endurance this aspect pattern can be intense it can be stressful it can be infuriating but it can also be powerful and dynamic it can be strengthening now in fixed signs it's going to be a lot more holding supportive and stubborn 
In cardinal signs, there's a lot more ambition here with a go-getter feel, but can lack follow through. And in mutable signs, it's more flexible, it's going to be more adaptable, but can be distracted and sort of all over the place. Okay everyone, team meeting, and just so we are clear, I am the one who's in control. I have more say. <laughs> you think you have more say? No. Listen, I'm here and I'm going to make the rules. I'm in control. Oh, so you thought you could forget about me? No. Look, we are going to make this work. We're going to get stronger. We're going to focus our energy. We're going to show determination. How about that, right? And no, I do not agree with you. Or you. Definitely not you. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with your way of doing things or your way of doing things, but when we all come together, I think we could make this work. Yeah? Let's now explore the Grand Trine. So the Grand Trine is formed by three trines. Three points are connected together. The points involved are harmonized. The energy flow is well blended, it's smooth, this can be a very talented and enhanced aspect pattern, but it can also indicate laziness, taking things for granted. We might not realize how good we have it. Do we even use our gifts? Do we even use our talents? Now, challenging aspects may be necessary to motivate someone with this aspect pattern and to develop their traits. Of course, these aspect patterns can be created via transits. Now, Earth Grand Trines are naturally hard workers, but can be too rigid. Fire Grand Trines are natural leaders, but can be overly impulsive. Earth Grand Trines are naturally communicative, but find it hard to make their ideas real. And Water Grand Trines are naturally sympathetic and sensitive, but can be quite moody. I've got to say, the three of us together, we are unstoppable. We're so good at what we do. But I do think I'm just gonna play here for a little while. There's no point in rushing or overdoing it. There's no, there's no point. I'm good at what I do anyway. So yeah, I'll just, I'll just lay here. I'll get up soon. <gasps> oh my gosh, what time is it? Oh, I didn't do any of it. Oh. Definitely tomorrow. Are we all on board? We're going to get this done. We're not just going to lose the opportunity. We're not going to take this for granted. The stellium. Okay, so the stellium is formed when there is a cluster of three or more planets in one sign or house. The closer the planets are to one another, the stronger the stellium, the stronger the influence. Now, a person with this aspect pattern can truly embody the qualities of the sign with the, with the stellium, okay? They can be directing, very focused, with the energy. Much concentration is being placed into one specific area, you see? So, yes, focus. However, the challenge of the native with this aspect pattern is to integrate the opposing signs and houses qualities to balance, I suppose, themselves out and to not obsess. Okay, so I've done probably eight pages at this point. I am feeling a little bit hungry. <sighs> no, do you know what it is? I'm just gonna Keep going, I have three more pages to go, and then I'll eat after. Whew. That completed, 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 completed. But you know what? I'm so hungry. I wish I didn't deny my hunger cues. Okay, so let's now move on to a few of Mark Edmund Jones' shapes. In this video, we will explore the bowl, the seesaw, and the splash. I just, the name of the splash just, intrigues me. <laughs> okay, so the bowl is formed when all the planets are arranged across one half of the chart, usually put together by opposing signs or houses. So a person with this aspect pattern can be self-contained, very focused, 
They can be self-sufficient with an eagerness to find their purpose. They can be career focused and driven as well. However, the challenge of this native or of the native with this aspect pattern is to integrate the opposing hemispheres qualities, similar to that of, you know, someone with someone with stelliums, right? And the thing about this is they may feel like something is missing. Planets, however, on the edge of the bowl are the key to finding balance. I have a career that I really, really love and I'm dedicated to it. It fulfills me in so many ways, but somehow it just, it still feels like something is missing. And I, I just, I can't quite put my finger on it. And I just wish that I, I could, but even though I am so successful and I'm so determined, I just feel like I'm in need of something else. The seesaw. So the seesaw is formed when planets are grouped together in two opposing clusters. Two sections of the chart on either side of these clusters are empty of planets and at least 60 degrees wide. A person with this aspect pattern can experience instability and unease. They can be contradicting and it can feel conflict. They can feel conflicted basically. However, with experience, growth, wisdom, maturity, the native with this aspect pattern can become very dedicated, reliable, stable. This is about balancing the opposing energies. Other aspects in the chart as well can help with this, can support this. And the empty houses can also help when it comes to any instability. Essentially, this is about reaching a healthy balance. Often in life, I feel so incredibly frustrated. Like there's just this lack of balance. Whenever I try to direct my energy toward one major area of my life, I feel like there's a whole other area of my life that's just pulling at me and calling for my attention. But whenever I go over to that area of my life and I'm trying to attend to it, then the other area of my life grabs me back. And I'm just in this place of back and forth, back and forth, and I feel like I'm about to explode. I long for some type of balance where I'm not so consumed by all of the family stuff and all of the career stuff. I just need a little bit of ease. I just wanna, I wanna relax sometimes. Maybe it's up to me to try to find that balance and that starts with me being active, proactive about how I do that. So thinking about the steps that I can put in place, thinking about what I can take away and what I can add so that there is greater harmony. And lastly, my personal favorite, the splash. So the splash is formed when planets are like it signs. When the planets are splashed across the chart, sort of like splashing paint on a wall and then seeing how the colors show up, a splash shape occurs when the planets are fairly evenly spread around the horoscope. They are randomly sort of distributed, distributed across the chart in this splash. And a true splash should have at least seven tenanted signs and houses with no major stelliums. So a person with this aspect pattern can be pretty open, creative. They can possess many interests and passions, but they lack focus, okay? They can find it hard to concentrate for long periods of time. They can find it hard to finish projects as well. Think about the stellium again, okay? Someone with a stellium is gonna be way more likely to commit and follow through compared to someone with a splash, right? This, of course, is not to say um, that the splash is bad, though, because a great thing about someone who has this in their chart is they have so much to share. They have so much experience as well. They're diverse, they're interesting, and they're full of ideas. Still, it is likely that this person is not the most productive. I am bursting at the seams with ideas, super creative. I have so many passions, interests. Oh, the 
the interests I possess are endless and I love it. I love this about my life. I love that I'm so active in all these different areas. I can dabble into new things. I'm so curious, <laughs> but I cannot seem to finish things for the life of me. It's just hard for me to focus. It's hard for me to follow through. I need a little bit more of a, an anchoring. I need something that holds me in place. I, just, I feel like I need, I need some way of being able to keep at things without just jumping onto something else. Yeah, my productivity levels can sometimes, but whenever the spark arises, whenever there is something that's very interesting to me, I'm very active, I'm on it, I enjoy it, right? <sighs> Life. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my video talking all about seven different aspect patterns and shapes. Please let me know if you find this video to be helpful. Do you have any of these aspect patterns and she or shapes? And also, even if I didn't talk about the one that you have, let us know. Look, look up the aspect patterns and shapes for yourself. And did you learn something new today? Let me know. I would really appreciate your feedback and like you, I am always learning. You can find all of the sources that I used in this video in the description box down below. And again, I wanna say thank you so, so much to my patrons for all of your support. Yeah, in general, let me know your thoughts and your opinions on today's video. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also give this video a like if you did like it today. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye.